guys in this video we are going to see the theory behind some of these pre-processing steps so this video is only the theory regarding why co-registration segmentation and regression is necessary in pre-processing in the next videos i will tell you how we can practically do co-registration segmentation and reg regression on the real fmri data okay so let's start with the theory first okay so in the previous video we saw realignment and we saw that okay the different volumes were actually aligned to each other but the problem was that still there were these things that were uh, there these dips that you can see were sit still visible so actually at these dips there was a motion which was corrected in the realignment step in the previous video uh, in case if you have not seen the previous video i'll put that in the i button so you can uh, click over here and see that video okay so these dips were still there so this was because the contrast had changed when there was a motion right other than that there are also some structured noise that can be seen in the data which can be due to physiological effects like breathing so when a person breathes there is some structured noise because of that uh, periodic motion of breathing so that can also be reflected in the signal the same goes with heartbeat at, as well and then these were actually the motion artifacts so we'll see how can we remove this theoretically okay <clears throat> so the answer to uh, how can we remove this is by nuance regression so what nuance regression does is suppose we are given with the noise signal say you have the noise signal this is these are two noise signals that correspond to this data okay so this is given to you suppose for now i don't know how we'll get this at this point of time but say you are given with them okay so these are two noise signals okay now if you are given with the two noise signal what you can do is so this is the original bold time series of this particular voxel which is nothing but this center voxel okay so what i do is this time series can be regressed by the two noise signals in other words by regression you can have a linear combination so this particular noise signal multiplied by some beta which is a scalar beta 1 this other noise signal multiplied by some beta 2 this 2 plus some residual signal when you add all these three you will get your original bold signal okay so this is uh, in mathematical terms known as linear combination so i am trying to find out a linear combination of the two noise signals that can approximate my original signal so what these regressors do is they give you this value of beta 1 and beta 2 once you get beta 1 and beta 2 you multiply it with their respective noise signals and then that signal that you get you subtract it from the original signal so you get the residual or the error okay so now since this so this beta 1 and beta 2 tells you what is the extent of uh this signals uh, power or how much this signal is responsible to make in in to make this particular signal so if you can see there is this high dip over here and there is a high dip over here as well so there will be some component of this signal which represents this dip and the same can be over here as well so once you get this beta 1 and beta 2 you add both of these and you subtract it from the original signal that means now i have removed the components of this two noise signal from my original signal and now this signal is free from any of these noises and this is pure uh, uh, neuronal signal this is what i can say okay or uh, this is with the assumption that these two are noisy signals these are actually noise signals okay so once we have the noise signals we can get or we can remove 
those noisy counterparts from the original signal. But the question that now we can ask is how do we get this noise signals? We don't know what is the noise beforehand, right? So to answer that, uh, let me first tell you about what is a neuronal signal and a non-neuronal signal. So the, this is a uh, MRI image, but this is a structural MRI image or the anatomical scan. This is not a functional scan. So you can see over here, you can distinguish the three tissues in the brain. So this gray color tissue is nothing but the gray matter. This is a T1 weighted image, by the way, T1 weighted MRI image. So the gray tissue over here is known as the gray matter. The relatively white tissue over here, lighter tissue, this is known as the white matter. And this very dark thing in the middle, this is CSF or cerebral spinal fluid. Okay, so now the main neuronal signals or the main neurons are uh, assumed to be present over here in the gray matter region. So mostly fMRI studies these gray matter signals. There is another branch known as DTI that studies the white matter signals. Okay. So these are the gray, ma gray matter signals and these gray matter signals are informative or these are known as the neuronal signals. The, the signals that come from gray matter is known as neuronal signals. These other white matter and CSF signals are not neuronal signals. They are non-neuronal signals. So what we can do is we can take signals from these regions that is CSF and the white matter and assume them to be noise because these don't have any neuronal behavior so these signals actually represent some other kind of uh, so these so the signal source over here can be some noise like breathing so when i breathe uh, the whole brain gets affected it is not that only the gray matter or only the white matter would get affected the whole brain would get affected so by breathing heart heartbeat if there is a motion so if there is a motion artifact then all the uh, voxels over here will get if affected right hence what we can do is we can take signals from these regions and assume them to be noise because they don't have any neuronal uh, activity or neuronal behavior right so that is our uh, motive now we what we'll do is we'll take signal from white matter and what we can do is we can take a mean of them uh, because uh, we don't need so many signals because there, there are a lot of voxels over here so taking every voxel may not be uh, feasible so we can take the mean of the white matter, we can take the mean of the CSF and then assume that to be the noise signal. That is what we can do. But, so the, the earlier image, this is a anatomical image, a T1 weighted image. However, this is how a functional image looks like. So this is the actual 4D functional image. Uh, this is how it looks like. So this is very low resolution as compared to the anatomical image. This is low resolution also because you have to take a lot of scans in a less duration of time. Right. So over here in the functional image, it is very difficult to understand which is the gray matter, white matter and CSF over here. Hence, what we can do is... <clears throat> we will segment the anatomical image we'll segment the gray matter white matter and csf in the anatomical image and then that segmentation can be used over the functional image but this can only be done if both these belong to the same person so uh, for a particular data set it is very highly recommended that you have the resting state signal, the fMRI functional signal, as well as the same subject's anatomical signal as well. Because every person has a unique brain size, unique brain shape, etc. So it is very important that the anatomical image that you have belongs to the same person. 
okay and then you can segment the anatomical image and overlap it over the functional image to get the uh, to understand which uh, regions over here are white matter gray matter and so on so once so let us just try to overlap this functional image over the anatomical image so here you can see there is a problem the problem is these two are not correctly aligned to each other you can see that this functional image is a little lower this anatomical image is a little upper right and this actually is a different slice uh, in the brain and this is a different slice altogether so this is a problem these two are not actually registered or aligned that brings us to what we call as co-registration so first we'll have to co-register the functional image to the anatomical image so earlier i was just showing you one particular view but now let us look at all the different views so that we get a better perspective so this is the functional image over here and this is the anatomical image over here now if i try to see the alignment you can see they are uh, not aligned to each other the functional image is not aligned to the anatomical image so over here in the sagittal so this is the sagittal view in the sagittal view you can see the difference clearly right so what we do there is some technique we'll see that in the next video by which we can co-register the functional image to the anatomical image and this is it so here I have co-registered the functional image to the anatomical image. Now let us see how is the overlap. So you can see the beautiful overlap over here. Now the functional image is very nicely overlapped or aligned or co-registered to the anatomical image. You can see these beautiful structures over here. Right. So this is uh, the reason why we have to register co-register the functional image to the anatomical image now once the anatomical image and the functional image are aligned what we'll have to do is we'll have to segment the anatomical image to get the white matter voxels and the csf voxels so this this is the csf voxels or the csf csf regions over here and earlier were the white matter regions okay so once you have these masks now so this is the white matter mask what you can do is you can overlap this white matter mask on the functional image so here you have overlapped the white matter mask on the functional image and just extract all these white matter voxels and the time series corresponding to the white matter voxels okay and then take the mean of all those uh, time series that will give you the mean time series signal okay similarly you can have the mean csf signal over here and like this we got our two signals which are the mean csf signal which looks like this for this case and the mean white matter signal which looks like this now because we can assume that these are non-neuronal signal and hence these can be noisy hence these can be termed as the noisy signals and we can do a regression over these signals so that we get our noise free signal in this particular because this is just a theory i've just uh, taken into consideration the mean of white matter and the mean of C uh, csf uh, voxels but uh, there are also some other uh, things that we will see when we actually do this particular regression uh, i mean i actually show you the code and all those things okay so there will be some more so it depends on how many noise sources or how many things you want to regress out of the particular signal so that is uh, what we'll see when we actually practically do that so that was the main thing about this video so now we know why we need to do co-registration so first we need to align the functional and the anatomical image because segmentation of anatomical image is uh, more easy and functional image is very difficult so you first co-register both of them then segment the anatomical image and then regress the non-neuronal time series that we have extracted from segmentation right 
so this were this were the reason now in the next video we will see actually how we can do for registration segmentation and regression that's all for this video i hope you could uh, get or understand all the things clearly uh, thank you so much for watching thank you